人权理事会在保护和推动世界各地的人权方面是很重要的一个机制，但是他无法独自完成这些工作。这里我们看一下国民社会如何与人权理事会及其成员国互动。我们都听说公民社会的参与很重要，但是到底什么是公民社会呢 ？Civil society is really a way of capturing all actors, individuals or organizations that are independent from the government. You might think of these as the big international non-governmental organizations like Amnesty International. Uh, the Red Cross, but also regional, national, grassroots organizations, even individuals. Anyone who does the work of defending and promoting human rights is a human rights defender. So I've seen the engagement、uh, with the Human Rights Council both from an NGO perspective and on the other side from a government perspective, and it's I would say a work in progress. It's not easy. Um, the Human Rights Council is basically a body of states. They're all there in their political capacity. Some are more receptive to NGOs than others.、Um, there's some limitations on access. There's some limitations on what NGOs can say.、Um, but there are opportunities, and I think growing opportunities for for civil society, for NGOs to engage at least with the states that have. Some demonstrated interest in human rights. 除了世界人权宣言，联合国还在一九九八年通过了专门针对于人权捍卫者的另一份文件。根据这份宣言，任何人有权利在本国以及联合国捍卫自己的权利。他们可以举行会议、和平示威、结社，在法院倡导权利，通过自己的努力或者与其他群体一起。哦、oh, ，首先呢，我不是人权，我、oh, I'm not a human rights lawyer <笑>。OK， I'm a human rights defender。然后，它其实是一个，呃，我我为什么要去做这个事情呢？我觉得是希望我用自己的方式，用自己的方式去帮助那些真正需要帮助的人。然后的话呢，帮助那些他们已经很努力，然后为梦想付出了很多，但是他们还没实现他们的一个梦想的那些人。嗯、uh,。嗯，其实我没有把自己定义为说我是一个人权捍卫者，我觉得那个是一个很怎么说很高的一个词语。我只是说我是一个律师，然后我做一些跟法律相关的工作，而我刚好对嗯，就是或者说人权或者说弱弱势群体的保护比较感兴趣。嗯，然后又想，我觉得我做的事情可以帮助到一些人，所以才去做。大家有权利提出人权问题。在全世界积极捍卫人权，但是人权捍卫者如何参与联合国最高层的人权机构，也就是人权理事会呢？参与人权理事会的第一件事是看日历。虽然一年开三次正式会议，每次开会不会涉及所有的议题。The council、um, is a great opportunity for NGOs to engage and for human rights defenders to participate. Um, but timing really is everything. So, for example, if you want to come and advocate on issues related to women's human rights, it's really important that you know that, for example, in June there's an annual full-day discussion on human rights of women. That's also the same time that resolutions on violence against women and discrimination against women are negotiated. So once you've been able to identify the right session, the right time to come and advocate, then you can start to st think strategically about how you want to do that advocacy. There are, there are lots of ways in which、uh, NGOs and human rights defenders can engage with the Human Rights Council.、Uh, one of the most obvious, of course, is that we have the chance to to take the floor during the Human Rights Council sessions to deliver statements on both thematic issues and country-specific priorities.、Uh, but on top of the、uh, the statements that we can make, which form part of the official record of the of the UN body, there's also the chance to engage in advocacy with particular governments to build support for issues that are important to us, to host side events and. Uh, and invite governments to to、uh, be on on panels or to attend panels where we present to them about our our priorities. Many countries support the UN Security Council and its work. It can become useful allies. But there are also some countries who do not support the UN Security Council. Even the human rights defenders are at risk. But it is not that they have no chance to participate. 
So for many countries, China would be one of many. Um, the government is much less enthusiastic about the process. Um, they're also less enthusiastic about NGO activism. Uh, it's often uh, dangerous even, certainly complicated for people to raise human rights issues that are critical of the government. So the question then, I think, for NGOs or for the activists is, how do you best use the process to inform others? Um, you can try to engage with your own government. If it's not going to work, then the alternative is to begin to get other governments to raise your concerns. And so if I'm an activist coming from, again, any one of these countries, China would be an example. Um, the goal is to come in plenty of time with good information that's easily understood and identify those countries that are going to be willing and able to raise those concerns. In the United States, we generally it's absolutely true that Geneva can be really hard to access for national level organizations. It's far away, it's expensive, there can be visa concerns. Um, but it's also true that not just anyone can walk into the Human Rights Council. Uh, NGOs that participate at the Council must be accredited by the UN's Economic and Social Committee, and this can be a very long, very complicated process. But that's not to say that there are no other ways of engaging. So accredited NGOs can offer temporarily to pass that accreditation on to a partner who might be in Geneva for travel. Um, if the partner can't come to Geneva, you can cooperate to make sure through joint statements or through side events that your partner is able to express your priorities in the council session. Now we're going to make a small break. To understand the human rights leadership is very important, because you can plan when you can participate in the most effective. 参与可以在日内瓦，也可以在本国，通过使馆和其他国家的代表。如果不能在日内瓦出席会议，可以递交报告，和其他组织合作，提出你的议题。不过，最主要的问题还在于参与到底有没有用。那呃，显然呃，余文的这一套体系是一个不能忽略的东西，是很重要的一个东西。当然，很多人也会说，余文的这套东西可能。不能很快见效，就是谈了很多次，但是中国政府一直在推脱，找各种各样的借口去去呃呃搪塞，去去敷衍了事。但是很显然，因为仍然是一个非常重要的呃一个平台、一个渠道，让外界了解中国的人权状况，同时还可以透过 UN 的这个体系，给中国施加一些呃压力。我觉得它是有作用的，就是说，它通过这套机制去审议报告，让中国可以参与到这个机制中间，让他去回应这些问题。嗯，但是如果他要真正的去发挥作用的话，必须要跟，就是要民间也要参与进来，要有要有一些互动。